Hello everyone, uh, this is RFA and welcome to Offbeat Medicine. Let's start with nephrology, transport physiology, nephron, transport physiology. So in here we have uh, the early PCT and early DCT, so let's talk from here. So looking at this thing, is. Uh, Whenever you see any question or anything like that, come back to this so that you can kind of make an image of what the PCT gives us. So it contains the brush bars and resolves all glucose. Very important, we talked about this in our uh, glucose clearance, that all glucose comes in the PCT. And amino acids, and which disease was it that if you don't have that, uh, then it's gonna cause amino acid uh, deficiency that was the heart nub disease okay just recalling back some information but moving on what do we have here and most of the bicarb sodium chloride potash I mean um, phosphorus potassium and water water mostly and uric acid uh, it is isotonic absorption and generates and secretes NH3 which enables the kidney to secrete more hydrogen Okay, uh, PTH inhibits sodium phosphate co-transporter, which causes increase in phosphate excretion. Remember the job of PTH. The PTH is there to dump. So the way I call it is P, instead of calling PTH, phospho phosphate dumping hormone. It's going to dump the phosphate no matter where. So it's dumping the phosphate and it's gonna keep the calcium in. That is the job of PTH. Like moving on, then we have the angiotensin II that stimulates sodium hydrogen exchange that leads to increase in sodium water and bicarb reabsorption, reabsorption permitting the contractional closes. And I'm just gonna read through this uh, because there is not much uh, uh, to, to have. It's just um, to memorization stuff. Uh, what else we have? Okay, now important point to be mentioned for the PCT is it reabsorbs about 60% or greater than 60% of water. PCT, 60% or greater, greater in, uh, gets the reabsorption done here in the PCT. And it regardless, and uh, there will be uh, other uh, uh, different other things that are going to do in, 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 in response to ADH and all that. But here it's regardless of any hormone or any hydration status. So 60% of water will be coming in through the PCT. Okay. And uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all we have. Let's talk about now thin. So as we are, let me also draw it here, the nephron from the glomerulus, the PCT, and thin descending loop of Henle. So let's talk about now the thin descending loop of Henle. It passively reabsorbs the, uh, the water via medullary hypertonicity, okay, impermeable to sodium. Concentrating segment makes urine hypertonic. So it is, it is permeable to water, but not to solutes. What, what are we going to remember about this thing? You can get the water in. It is permeable to water, but no solute. And guess what? When you drain all that water out of that um, tubule, all you're left with is solutes. Those solutes are going to cause the urine to be hypertonic at this stage. Hypertonic at this stage. Although we're going to go move on and its solutes are also going to be reabsorbed. So we will see that. But to remember the thin loop of Henle, we are, we are taking up all the water and keeping the solutes in. Okay, let's move on. What do we have? And one more thing. Uh, for here, the question is how, how hypertonic are you going to be at this stage? So, um, and we said that it really depends upon your ADH level. 
ADH levels. If we have an increase in ADH, then we are going to be going towards the maximum, which is about 1,200. Um, but if we do not have our low ADH, it will give us about 600 osmolality at, at this stage. Okay. That is kind of important, you know, and we will talk about it later on, too. Okay, uh, let's move on with the uh, thin, thin loop, thin, uh, thin descending loop of Henle. Let's move on with the thick, thick ascending loop of Henle. Okay, so it reaves all sodium and pota uh, sodium and potassium and chloride indirectly induces para-cellular reabsorption of the magnesium and, and, and calcium through positive lumen potential generated by potassium back leak. Impermeable. Now here's the difference. You have This is impermeable to water. The ascending one is impermeable to water, makes urine less concentrated as it ascends. 10 to 20% of sodium reabsorbed at this stage. Okay. Let's now, so we kind of look, that's the, that's the mechanism where you have the loop of uh, loop diuretics X on this uh, thick uh, and thin ascending limb. But moving on to the DCT. DCT reabsorbs, and you can look at this picture up top, reabsorbs sodium and chloride. It is impermeable to water and makes urine fully dilute. Again, going back, we just had, let's say we were taking out water here, and here we're just taking out all solutes. Again, here, we are taking out all the solutes that we have, right? So we are left with what? We're left with such a dilute kind of urine, which is hypotonic because we, we, we are taking out all the solutes. So it's just hyper, hypotonic, hypotonic at this, this stage. So what is the PDH going to do is, again, is calcium, uh, sodium exchanger, leaves in keys, calcium reabsorption. Again, 5 to 10% of uh, sodium reabsorbed. Now let's come to collecting the, the final thing here, the collecting tibules. Collecting tubules reabsorb sodium in exchange for secreting potassium and hydrogen regulated by aldosterone. If looking at aldosterone here, aldosterone, what is it doing? It reabsorbs in sodium in exchange for reabsorbs the sodium in exchange for secreting potassium and hydrogen. Okay, secreting potassium and hydrogen. That's the aldosterone. Aldosterone acts on the mineralic corticoid receptors, leads to mRNA, uh, leads to protein synthesis in the principal cells. These are the principal cells, the first ones. In principal cells, increase in apical potassium conductance, uh, increase in sodium potassium pump, increase epithel uh, epithelial sodium channels, ENAC activity, and uh, this causes lumen negativity, causes potassium secretion. In alpha chelated cells, lumen negativity leads to increase in, um, and whatever I'm, I'm saying, you can, you can look up uh, here in the image and it's going to be following the same thing. Increase uh, hydrogen ATPase activity causes hydrogen secretion, increase in bicarb and chloride exchanger activity. Now talk about ADH. What ADH is doing at collecting tubules is act on the V2 receptor, insertion of the aquaporins there, and uh, H2O channels to uh, the epical side. So more water is going to come in, and that's the work of ADH. So just a summary, what do we have here for the nephron? In the PCT, we are absorbing about 60% of the water, no matter what, uh, if we have the hormones or not, and if we have hydration status. And we're also, um, basically, PCT is we are reabsorbing every single thing in, in PCT. Okay? And moving on, what do we have? We have the thin one. Thin, we're just reabsorbing all the water, making the urine uh, so uh, hypertonic. And after that, it's just that we are uh, 
getting the the water remains there, and we're just getting the salutes out in the ascending one, and also for the DCT, getting the salutes out, so making the uh, urine as hypotonic. In the collecting tubules, again, it really depends upon which do we have the hormones, and depends upon cha uh, channels uh, in principal cells and in the uh, alpha chelated cells, alpha intercalated cells. So one now, important thing now in here, what do we have? Okay, so let me change the color and let's talk about a little more important points to be mentioned. Okay, first of all, we gotta know that this apical membrane is the urine, that's good they have mentioned, and the basal lateral membrane, this membrane all the way, is the blood, okay? Uh, that's one point. Second point we have is uh, we have, the again, the summary for the ADH. Uh, just to give you a little bit of example of ADH, that how AD, if the presence of ADH you have uh, about 1,200, but let's talk about that. So if you have a high ADH, let's make this one high, you have high osmolality in the collecting tubules. So that ADH is going to bind here, uh, leading to the V2 receptor, causing all the water to come back in right so when the water draws from urine side th this is urine right the water just goes back into the blood right this is gonna make urines hyper concentrated or hypertonic about how much hypertonicity we're looking at about 1200 and this urine is gonna go straight out and you will have so dark and concentrated urine in the presence of or in in, in a lot of presence of ADH what is ADH? Antidiuretic hormone, right? Antidiuretic hormone, antidiuresis, meaning get all the water out. We don't want the urine to have so much volume. Get all, everything back into the blood. And second thing, what we uh, second thing is, so increasing ADH causes uh, one thing in the collecting tubules about 1,200, right? The second thing is about uh, in the DCT. If we have ADH, it's going to cause hypertonicity in the DCT as well. But what level are we looking at? Here, we are going to have only to 100. So again, look, 100 osmolality in DCT in the presence of ADH. And when it goes to the collecting tubules, most of that water gets in causes 1200 hypertonicity in the presence of ADH. What about in the absence of ADH? So if you have a low ADH, what's going to happen is we have lowest osmolality in the collecting tubules. What is the lowest osmolality? Lowest osmolality. So the question is, where would you find lowest osmolality in the absence of ADH? Well, you will find that in collecting tubules. What is that lowest? That's 50 osmolality. Okay, 50 osmoles. And uh, in the low ADH, in, in the, D, in the um, thick descending loop, not the early this one, but thin descending loop, we have 600 of uh, 600 osmolality. Okay, I hope you're clear that decrease ADH or no ADH, lowest osmolality in the collecting tubules with about 50, but again in the absence of ADH in the thin descending loop of Henle, which is only permeable to water, has about 600. Okay. And the 1,200, as we talked about in increase in ADH, uh, we had 1,200. 1,200 is the max hypertonicity in the urine. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much it, what we have for the nephron transport physiology.